What's up, everyone? Alex Boylan here, co-founder of Dream Jobbing. I couldn't be more excited to have our guest for five questions with Mr. Greg Brewer. He is one of the top winemakers in the world. He's been on the cover of Wine Spectator. His wines have been, you know, been classified as like you know top ten in the world a few different times. He's unbelievable, and we actually just are soon coming out on Dream Job in a new series called The Winemaker, and Greg is going to be our our first premier Guinea featured <laughs> winemaker. It's really awesome. So I'm, I'm really excited about this, Greg, to dive into, you know, how you got to where you got awesome. in your career. And there's anyone, there's winemaker, I mean, you're living your dream job. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Every day. All right. So let's start at the beginning. <laughs> Five questions here. You know, um, how did you get exposed to wine? Where did it all begin for you? It's funny. I wasn't really raised with wine at all in life, you know, a teeny bit through different parent things here and there, but really I didn't know much about it at all. I mean, I liked it the way any college kid would like wine, you know, but I didn't know Chardonnay was a grape. I didn't really, I had a sense of where things came from because of my French background. Um, but not really, you know, I was drinking beer and doing whatever. And I loved wine and I, I knew wine was like fancier and cooler and sexier. Um, but it wasn't until I got my tasting room job in 91 that I, I started kind of seeing wine for what it is and, and the totality of the whole thing. And that's really what, it was a game changer for me. And it was a, a part-time job I stumbled into. It's a part-time <laughs> job that just exposed you to a world that you never yeah, knew. Yeah, that I never really knew. I mean, I, I, I loved it, you know, like, like anyone, wine's sexy, right? Think about yeah. candles and barrels and cellars and cobwebs and all yeah. that. And so that's, that, that has an attraction for sure to almost everybody, if you think about it, right? Uh -huh. that it's evocative of that kind of elegant, cool thing. Um, but I just did, I didn't know how all the, the dots kind of were put together. I just yeah. knew like, oh, wine's cool. But that was about it. Was there a moment in that first like, you know, first job where you're like, this is it for me? You know what I mean? Oh. This is my dream job and I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. For sure, yeah. I think even when I interviewed, I think walking into Santa Barbara Winery and the smell in the winery was like, I couldn't imagine. Like, there's like nice music playing and it smelled cool and there's like crackers on the bar and people are tasting wines and I just, I was like, oh my God. And I'm pretty driven and so, you know, I applied and I wanted the job so bad. I didn't even need a job, but I was like, whoa, I, I have to have this job. <laughs> And so that was, I was just became obsessed, to be honest. And so, and then once I got the job, um, it wasn't immediate, but I, you know, I was patient and I persevered um, and I got the job. And then literally, I remember like, it was one of those jobs, at least then, where the training was pretty short. I mean, you went in, you signed some paperwork, you put on the logo shirt, and then you were behind the bar. And it was like, uh -huh. there you go, here's Sauvignon Blanc, whatever. And th in moments, I just thought, whoa, this is the coolest thing. And, and then it was literally that night, if not the next day, that I knew I would devote my life to it. Wow, yeah. that's awesome, huh? It was so, amazing. It's yeah. so cool. When you look back, <laughs> Greg, what do you think it was about you, the circuit? What was it do you think that you owe a lot of the success that you've had in this craft? Well, I think, I think a lot. I mean, I love working, right? So if, if you, I was raised, you know, um, my folks kind of separately really instilled in me, um, you know, just do what you love and everything else will make sense, mm -hmm. right? So it, there That's was- a gift in and of itself. For I, sure. I have parents like that too. And for I sure. Do. And yeah. there was never anything like, oh, you've got to be a lawyer or doctor or professor. There's never, ever, ever any pressure in that regard. I could have yeah. been a pro cyclist. I could have been an exotic dancer. I could have been anything, right? Yeah. And they just- but they, it was paramount that they, you know, that I, you just love what you do and mm -hmm. then everything else will work out. And so with that in my core, that's, that's been the approach. And I love working. And so that's helpful. Um, and uh, just to apply yourself. But if, you, if you're doing something and you don't even feel like it's work per se in, in the way that sometimes people refer to work in a more derogatory way, then I think you, it's, there's a tendency to be successful. If you love what you're doing, like you, you, you bring an intent and you bring a purpose to it that's very, very different right. from something that's more based on like obligation or something you need to do. Like I get to do this yeah. every day. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And it's cool. And you can, you, you can still see it with your energy that it's like you're, you're so appreciative of it. I love yeah. it. I can't yeah. believe. And it's not, it's not even the things that people think about. I mean, it's, you know, delayed flights and crazy things. And I mean, you know, th this isn't always, 
you know, like a yellow brick road, right? right. But but it um, but every element of it, you know, taking out the trash, scrubbing the floor. Like I love every single element of this, and and no no experience or no task is or better or worse for me. They're right. all the same. I love them all. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. What do you think that what what's the biggest misconception working in this business? Because I think that you know you look at like a wine maker like yourself, and like, <laughs> you know, like you like look at the glamour side. We, we were sure. talking about this before we started recording. Absolutely. Like it's kind of similar in in entertainment. Sometimes people see this one side, but what's the biggest misconception? You know, well, of like building a career and working as a winemaker. Well, I think I think there are a lot. I mean, I think in any field, especially now with social media, I mean, everyone, everyone's life seems so much cooler than they really are. Yeah. So it's kind of the same for, for everything. But, you know, in this role, you know, especially from the outside, so most people think, oh, what do you do? You sit around and drink wine all day? That's cool. And it's like, yeah, that's all we do is hang out and just pull corks and, you know. Um, and, you know, it's one of those jobs where there certainly is that element. You know, yes, I, there are times when I'm in crazy cities, dressed up, drinking champagne, and like you just, you can't, you know, it's very extravagant. Mm -hmm. um, but that's coupled with, you know, working in the middle of the night, you know, mm -hmm. in an industrial building, and you're sleep deprived, and your hands are all cut up, and you're, and, and that's, that's part of it too, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I think, I think it's all cool, you know, it's kind of like a chef, right? You think about, you know, the floor of a restaurant and the chef comes out in white coat and everyone's like, oh my God, there's the chef and oh my God, that was so good. And some photos and you sign some menus yeah. and you think that's all glamour, not thinking about what that chef has been doing, A, his or her old, whole life, but certainly that right. whole day, yeah. <laughs> prepping, cleaning, you know, yeah. on their feet all day long. And so it's similar in that regard. You know, there's the kind of front of the house, back of the house thing, which, yeah. which I love about it, but it's, it's a lot more monastic and it's a lot more kind of dull really than, than people might mm. want to think it is. Right. Um, yeah. Cause a lot of it's just patience and waiting in agriculture. Yeah. 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 That's very cool. All right. Fifth and final question. What's your advice? Someone's out there and they're like, man, I want to work in wine, right? I want to be, whether it's a winemaker or get into the business, like what's your advice to them? So I think advice for, for anybody in any job, to be honest, certainly in this field is, um, just kind of be, be sincere with what you want to do, you know? So if it's, you know, an awareness of self and awareness of others, right? So if, if, you, if you really are into wine and you really want to get involved, you know, determine what part of the wine world you want to be in, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you're into sales and education, then maybe stay on the kind of front of the house side. If you are more reclusive or you're into lab work, whatever, then there's like lab things you could do. Or if you're into ag and farming, then there's obviously the, the vineyard piece. So kind of identifying what part of the industry. And then, you know, I think ultimately what for the little successful tip is um, a heightened awareness for everything. I think something that has been a benefit to me in my career is that I started in a tasting room, right? And so, you know, that this, this world is really comfortable for me. I, I come from education ultimately before that. And so I love teaching, I love presenting, I love promoting that way. Um, and then wine production, everything else is, is, is great. And I'm, I'm really good at that. But I, I think being aware of every part in the system is key for someone. Mm -hmm. And then also all wineries are different, right? The size of the winery, the culture and the ethos of the winery, yeah. like a restaurant. Yeah. So, Someone that wants to get into the restaurant business as a parallel, you know, is it some tiny little mom and pop boutique with a chalkboard or is it a big right. blingy kind of yeah. Hollywood thing, right? And so kind of knowing yourself and, and being sensitive to like what you want as an individual, um, because if you are happy as a person and you're committed and driven to make the best of what that situation is, everything will benefit as a result. Five questions, Greg Brewer. I appreciate it, brother. <laughs> this is awesome. And I just want to let everyone know who over the age of 21, you have to have like all these wines, but you definitely got to check out the Pierre Noir Brewer Clifton. It's the best. I appreciate Thank you. you.